call is now being recorded. Good morning all. On behalf of IIT Academy, I welcome you all for the seventh session of National Level Faculty Development Program on Basics of Research and Funding Opportunities. Let me introduce the research person of today's session, Dr. Sriranjini Moksha Gundam. Dr. Sriranjini Moksha Gundam, the great granddaughter of Bharat Bhutna, Sir Moksha Gundam Vishwesvaraya, is working towards the advancement of the society by imparting knowledge. She is the Faculty of Management, Sri Jagadguru Bala Gangadhar College of Management Studies, Bangalore. Her qualifications include MBA and PhD in Management. She has eight years of experience in teaching and research. Dr. Sriranjani has rendered her services as principal, professor, research supervisor, and has memberships with national and international professional bodies. She has also presented and published numerous articles, textbooks, and is an editorial board member of high esteemed journals. She is also a certified soft skills trainer, German language teacher, NLP practitioner, and life coach. With this, I hand over the session to Dr. Sri Ranjini. Ma'am, please. Thank you so much, ma'am. You're welcome, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. So, hope I'm audible. Yes, ma'am, you're audible and your slides are also visible, ma'am. Thank you. Good, ma'am. Okay. Am I visible, madam? Is my video working? Yes, ma'am, your slides are visible, ma'am. Correct. Okay, slides. Myself? Is my video? Uh, no, ma'am. I'm not able to see. You. Sorry. Okay, I have just switched it on. Let me see. Okay. Right. Okay. Uh, very good morning. So, I will be national FDP on uh, basics of research and uh, funding opportunities. Hopefully today is the last day and you still have that uh, enthusiasm, participants. I really appreciate you for that. So I'm just going to speak about plagiarism and we all know about it. It is the malicious, wicked or you can call it as mean act in research as well as in publication. Right. So before we start any further discussion, I just have a small exercise for all the participants. Shall we do it together? Yes, no, are you interested? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes. Now, I will talk about plagiarism. Whatever is your understanding about plagiarism, let's uh, let's try this exercise. Okay. So consider this following extract. Okay. So this is the original text. It's a small paragraph. And F. H. Hinsley, he has written something about sovereignty. So the edition, where where it is published, page numbers, everything is written there. Okay. Now. This is the original text. And my question, I'll show you, say, five cases. So you all can spot or you can let me know which case is or are plagiarism, which comes under plagiarism, right? Okay. The first one, the first paragraph, whatever you see, it is the original text, whatever the author has written. So yes, we shall do it together. And the red is something rewritten or however it is written. You can just have a look at it. You need not have to go inside the uh, deeper meaning of the same. But at least the, how the pattern, how it is written, those things you can just see. Uh, if you want to speak something, you can just unmute yourselves and you can speak. All right. When we just look at the first paragraph, uh, the thing which is written in black color. And then the second one is the written something in red color. And it, it looks like something rephrased or re, with rewordings. 
or use usage of some synonyms whatever we shall just have a look at it so when we just have a brief look at this both paragraphs it seems to be almost the same there is no much difference only in the first line it says at any rate that is not there in the uh, second uh, i mean in the uh, uh, red wordings okay now i'll show you one more text okay now as i told you the one in black is the uh, uh, original one okay now the red thing uh, the wordings written in red it says in its earliest manifestations sovereignty so 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 it starts so when we just have a brief look at this so many things have been changed ultimate locus of authority where in uh, uh, black color when we when we see it says absolute political authority so there are so many changes some kinds of synonyms are being used yes we can stop it now i'll show you the next one yes the first one is what the author has written and the second one written in red it says as hinsley 1986 author whoever the main author was he argues and what all this is almost it is the same first statement and it is done within quotations agree any doubts now i show the fourth uh, fourth version of the same okay first uh, in the black it is the original authors wordings and in the red one uh, we have rewritten it as as one authoritative source puts it again in the quotation marks we have written it almost when we check this same thing similar things are there within the quotation mark whatever the author has said originally the same thing is again there and it uh, at the last at the end it says hinsley in the year uh, 1986 page numbers everything are written okay now the last case i'll just show it to you okay at the beginning at any rate first one is the original uh, author whatever he has written next it says the discussion of sovereignty has evolved from the classical notion so and so so Uh, uh the first original authors wordings they are just uh, five lines this they have reduced it to four lines and so many wordings are also changed and we can also see that there the author is quoted right yes now i want you to speak and you let me know right we have seen this five cases so which case is a clear cut case of plagiarism can you just answer me whatever is your understanding about plagiarism you let me know within that uh, or i can just let me know yeah we have seen five cases of plagiarism so which comes under plagiarism and which does not come though your answer is wrong not a problem you can just interact participants you can just unmute yourself Yes, yes. Yeah, ma'am. I guess first one is the case of plagiarism. Okay. Case one, because almost similar wordings, everything was the same. Similar wordings were, and right. no okay. citations were given. Okay. So we can term then, it as absolute case uh, slide, of plagiarism. Uh, okay. Then, what about the other cases? And uh, others can also fifth. unmute yourselves, and you can give your idea. Fifth one, okay. Is this a, a case of plagiarism? No, no, it is not a pure case of plagiarism. We cannot say it as plagiarism. It's not plagiarism. Okay. And rest all, I cannot uh, like uh, clearly uh, understand. They are somewhat okay. changed. Okay. So, so right. some okay. percentage might be plagiarized. Right. Okay. Okay. Good. Right. So. We will not try to understand. Later on, we can we shall come back to this after we after we understand thoroughly about plagiarism, right? Okay. Thank you for your uh, response, Ms. Ruja. Yes. Now I'll just start with the introduction. Right. So publication of research papers or say academic documents will always fetch us some kind of recognition, and we all agree to that. Yes. As an author, I'll get some recognition. It, it could be from the public or it could be from my fellow scientists anybody so anybody they'll recognize me as an author if i write if i pen down something yes when we are writing something we all know that quality quantity both are important yes 
but what many people do is they just want to escalate the numbers if i have written two papers it's not enough i want more i want to publish 10 papers what will i do i just want to escalate my numbers what one person will do what individuals will do they'll start producing say below average or inferior works or they'll start producing something with plagiarized contents we all know that publishing these kinds of works it is always dishonorable as well as incorrect why is it so because it has its own sweet negative impacts right yes many time many a times what will happen either the scientists researchers they try to publish as many papers as possible what they'll do they would have a main work they try to split it down and they try to publish it yes there are another cases of say predatory journals we have publication of bogus articles they are the other set of problems whatever we have right i have put a saying here and we all know about that publish or perish so it is prevalent from many years among our uh, academic circles and with this saying we understand that how much pressure we have as students scholars or even as academicians to publish research papers mainly and we want to promote our career right that's why this saying has come all together we also have another catchphrase that is publish and perish why has this come we know if we don't publish we perish why do we publish and perish so this has this catchphrase mainly it has come to caution our scientific community about what about the dangers that are involved in opting say unhealthy practices in publication what we should do as individuals we should try to sidestep these issues how can we do that we should try to publish quality articles we should try to publish only in reputed journals so that what will happen flourish as well as flourish and that should be our main motto yes there are so many serious issues uh, in uh, research as well as in publication which perishes my and there are a lot of practices like that and let us see one by one what are those uh, serious uh, misconducts negative practices we shall check yes we have something called fabrication of data as the name suggests fabrication means you are making up the data cooked up data so you are reporting it as say you are a reflection of uh, probably the never performed research study right what the researcher will do he or she will fill out the experiment with personal assumed data okay this result some chemistry lab experiment i am doing the result has to be 17 what will i do uh, i'll i'll presume i know what what should be uh, the end result what will i do i'll put it as 16.95 okay now i am on the safer side so i do not want to take any risk or n number of times i have worked on it and i am not getting any result what can i do i'll just fabricate i'll i'll submit my report that's what i can do right that is what is in my hands okay so the studies it might not have been conducted at all or you would not have performed or you would have performed it uh, say artificially with some kind of exaggerated or magnified numbers right uh, probably you, your sample size would be 65 by the time you meet 65 people uh, you think uh, you will get boredom or because of non responsiveness anything uh, so now you are, what you want to do you do not want to continue your research you will say that instead of 65 you just add one before to that it will be 165 now what is it you are trying to do you are cooking up the data right so numerous reports about this uh, fabricated data it has been reported since many years uh, different editors they reported publishers they tell this across the globe we have been seeing this problem of fabrication see uh this cases of fabricated data it is they are really very very difficult to investigate and we see this common mistake everywhere in academics as well as in scientific research studies also so for example when i'm speaking about this uh, fabrication of data uh, i remember one uh, in japan i do not want to just name the researcher uh, he was found guilty of data fabrication probably this came in uh, this report it was it came in five years back probably 2018 say so he was one of the associate professor of anesthesiology so anesthesia some studies regarding that uh, what happened uh, once the investigation was done and that particular professor he had fabricated more than 180 studies 
whatever he had uh, conducted almost 180 studies they were reported to be fabricated and he has become the record holder of number of retracted papers from a single author see uh, the retraction it could be the withdrawal denial or whatever the journal or editors whatever decision they would have taken about his paper but he has become the re record holder in a negative way is this all needed to us and one more example he was a uh, professor of sociology probably in netherlands uh, in some university he was a professor again he was also found uh, at fault uh, for the fabrication of data and this former professor he was uh, uh, probably uh, over 50 of his publications they were retracted in netherlands right he was found guilty of the crime now we should understand what are the negative results if we do this kind of fabrication yes while coming to falsification of data see falsification means we are trying to manipulate the research materials uh, equipments or even processes or what will happen you are trying to ignore some part of data that is not favorable to you or you are trying to alter it alter the results now what is happening Yeah, record. You are trying to give a false impression of the study. It could be even manipulation of the images. You are trying to remove the any kind of outliers or some kind of deviation you have got from your experiment. You want to remove that for it to be on a safer side. Or you are trying to vary something. You are trying to add something or eliminate some data points. Anything, all these things will come under falsification of data. So, for example, if we just take a laboratory assistant, usually what he or she will do, uh, they'll try to provide pleasing results. Obviously, whatever is their study hypothesis, they'll go according to that. And sensing this kind of data falsification, particularly when you take up the scientific experiments, it's always very very hard because, uh, see, as I told you, that results should be 17. It has come to they have put it as 16.95. representing anything then coming to the duplicate manuscript publication again the word is self explanatory this uh say it could be simultaneous today in april i have sent somewhere in june now again last month june i have did the same study or it could be simultaneous now itself i have just finished my work uh, today itself i am sending the same thing to one journal two journals or more journals whatever it could be nearly simultaneous or years later somewhere in 2017 i would have submitted one uh, article the same article now in 22 i am trying to submit it but what is it i'm trying to submit a duplicate work so it is it's a clear waste of my time the time of the readers resources of readers because they would have subscribed they would have bought the journal uh, time waste for peer reviewers as a reviewer what can i do if you have submitted the same thing in 2017 i don't know because i cannot read all the papers in this world so if you have submitted like it again my part is to just review and send back a review whether it is publish uh, publishable or minor revisions are necessary whatever is i tell it to you i tell i'll just communicate with the editors that is my part but still if you have sent a duplicate manuscript which is already published somewhere what is happening it is waste of time for even me as a reviewer even to the editors and moreover it pointlessly saturates the literature with redundant results and we don't need it because this kind of results it weakens or even you can say it dents the integrity of scientific literature as a whole right yes and coming to the point of redundant publications we would all have heard about salami publishing right so one study or say previously published founding uh, findings somewhere you will split into several parts and you'll submit to two or more journals what is it you are trying to do you are not giving proper cross referencing you have not taken consent from the owner or you are not giving justification for your act of this redundant publication 
or self plagiarism you would have heard about this and this is also considered a form of redundant publication what will i do i'll just try to recycle or borrow the content from my own prior work without giving proper citation so though this act is general what will i say it is unplanned so after all it's my work so i have taken it i have used it again because i also it's mine i can do with i can do anything with it no that's really wrong and it comes under the act of self plagiarism right so there should be transparency by the author who will do this kinds of self plagiarism why is it i am using this previously published work and i have to give the necessary information i should let them know is it something i am building on my previous study was it deliberate or was something accidental or anything what is it have done this i should just be on the contrary sometimes what will happen the collaborators uh, who will fulfill the criteria of authorship they are seldom excluded rarely rarely say there are one to five authors what will happen one and two they would have not written anything what will happen the senior author they'll try to place themselves as primary uh, author ahead of the one who has actually significantly contributed something to the larger part of the study many authors do this and the beneficiary reason but any authors if at all these super well people are under me they should write papers they should publish something what will i do i'll ask them to put my name as a first author because i get more benefit out of and you have heard of those she also especially when we take the example of safety trials or something like that with new technology and uh, even the we see we witness the industry they write something and they submit these manuscripts or say presentations in others names and all this comes under fraudulent the research is something and it is supposed to do I have to concept. I have to plan to implement the data. Then go for the writing part, right? And all authors, if there are one or two authors, two three authors, and to all of them should have the truthfulness. Even as what we have in this committed for, yeah, publication. And obviously, when there is more than one author, the contribution ambiguity will be there. Authorship order always we have conflict on this. Honorary authorship, everything, all these things will come when we speak about the authorship, when we are authoring, or when we are speaking about the uh, fraudulent authorship. So all these things must be really taken care. When we speak about the conflict of interest, say it could be actual or it could be potential conflict of interest. when this arises see when my personal interests or my objectivity in the study it is compromised or in the verge of compromising we will have a conflict of interest journals they have, no doubt they have the guidelines to assist investigators the universities also other institutions to deal with these kinds of conflict of interests see uh, the seriousness mainly of a conflict it could be on anything the conflict uh it will definitely vary it depends on the nature of the conflict and in what context has this conflict arisen altogether we need to check so in all cases whenever the conflict of interest arises uh see uh, we all would have some uh, we all have some kind of fundamental concern what is it we want to start that all the decision uh, regarding that uh, writing part or decision part all the decisions whatever we make they are to be made impartially to manage this of bias now there is a future bias in the same time properly right yes for example it could be a financial conflict of interest you see 
happens will happen in any situation. You stand the brain or you stand to lose initially the decision, whatever the rest to be. Or financial conflict or indirect loss, indirect gain, anything. Always see if it is interest me. It may not have all the cash change in the hands directly. No need. Uh, for example, it could be an effect on the value of a land or the value of the shares, whatever you own, or something. Uh, this financial conflict of interest it may have some kind of impact. Turnover of business and when you something about financial conflict of interest is also you are not affected directly the decision of the you are affected in one or the other way that this is subjective and you are not partial biases anything an example it could be and containing kind of personal anything so if of an organization where you are working outside of your work anywhere you you might be involved there something but it is a non financial conflict of interest when you are trying to consider the interests of say your relatives friends anything anything you should have a careful judgment what will happen if i take uh, this suggestion from a particular person what will be the impact know that right okay uh we also have something called conflict of roles so for example it will arise in a situation where you are the uh, decision maker it's just an example say you are the decision maker for two different organizations right now you have a conflict over the same matter again this is a non financial conflict only uh, what will happen uh, uh, when you are involved towards both the organizations as a decision maker can you effectively uh, make decisions for both organizations about that project or about that particular transactions whatever you are involved in see because you owe a duty of confidentiality uh, to both the parties to both the organizations what you will do you can only support any one organization you will advance any uh, private interest or you will show partiality you will try to pay that is not in one organization's best interest say either you are with a organization a or you are with b and you see the conflict of roles you also have predetermination see before you consider any evidence in a conflict or in any situation say for that matter what do you do you make up your mind Technically speaking, this is not a form of conflict of interest at all, but we have some kind of prejudice. We have some kind of subjectivity, right? Uh, this is almost it is derived from the common law on bias, bias, biasness, right? Partiality. So sometimes what will happen? I'll have some strong views about a, a matter, and this will definitely create a risk of prejudice or say a predetermination. I just have a closed mindset. whatever person a will say i have a fixed position i am not at all willing to consider whatever mr a says i do not want to fairly consider at all whatever the though very information or the arguments whatever he is making though they are relevant and i do not so i have Again, this will depend on the context it has taken. What is my role as a decision maker, or what sort of decision am I am I asking? Uh, am I being made? So, uh, the general personal factors, or say uh, ethnicity, my background, my religion, uh, even my natural origin, age, many many in subjectivity. it could be my philosophical learnings it could be my political learnings my wealth yes it 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 plays a important part in subjectivity or my even my professional background all these things they'll play a important role in creative uh, i mean definition according to the merriam webster dictionary 
it says to plagiarize means all the all of the following what does it say to steal or to pass off whether it could be the ideas words anything I take it from somebody, I steal it from somebody and say, it is my own idea. You are committing. Use the else's ideas, words, and production. I'm not giving a proper crediting. No? So, right? Crediting, acknowledging, all this in the so basically is a hopeless piece. It is dishonorable practice. It will definitely or easily it will damage one's credibility for the matter. So, it could be producing any documents, say. Widely there is ethics. It will also occur in writing novels. Yes. Somebody would have taken the original Again, there is a certain percentage. to check whether article or book or assignment whatever you submit seminar papers thesis anything which was submitted by the students research scholars or say even teaching faculty also whether it can copy materials or no we just don't know uh, people have uh, simply copied some sentences paragraphs from one or more than one sources yes that happens okay, what is happening Resource person will be joining soon. We are sorry for the inconvenience. Uh, she has some network disturbance.
a very sorry hope, hopefully you are uh, able to listen to me yes ma'am sorry sorry for the technical glitch moment i'm sharing my screen is my screen visible yes ma'am it is visible thank you i'm making it visible yes ma'am it is visible ma'am yes, right ma right very Not sorry visible. very sorry for the technical glitches okay let's just continue yeah i was just telling that plagiarism earlier there were no mechanisms to check whether whatever we have copied it could be your uh, seminar papers assignments anything but today when we just start probably to write something we will go to search engines it could be a uh, google google scholar pubmed or cap direct database anything when we just click on this it, it it definitely leads to many other sources and because it contains anything and everything we want today right i can sit here i can do each and everything i can get whatever i want eventually what will happen an assignment you, it would be completed in a you can call it as a, a hodgepodge manner or some kind of jumbling manner we will somehow complete an assignment because i'll take something from this source i'll take something from that source everything i'll i'll make a mixture i'll submit it so today we will call this as uh, just an act of copying and pasting but still one should understand that we are stealing something from somebody else and we are totally cheating the system and thus we are practicing plagiarism right so we should be aware that plagiarism checking software they are now very versatile and you will be caught with clear evidences and if you are caught what will happen the impact on your career it will be like disastrous so please never try to publish and perish but instead try to publish as well as flourish okay yes plagiarism it can manifest itself in variety of ways as i told you it is not just confined to the student papers or to the uh, published articles or books for example again to quote something a famous musician he was found guilty of unconscious plagiarism again i'll not tell the name uh, by including the elements of another musical group uh, which had previously recorded this song and this person he was forced to pay compensation just for the act of plagiarism even a psychologist Uh, who had a doctoral degree uh, he resented it was withdrawn after that university found that uh, most of the portions of his doctoral uh, dissertation they were plagiarized a newspaper writer also <coughs> so he was found to have plagiarized material for some of some of his articles and he ended up resigning his position see how disastrous is this how shocking so plagiarism is a very serious form of ethical misconduct and we all should know it right so just like other issues plagiarism also has its myths or you can call it as misconceptions seriously we all will land up in trouble if we ignore the copyright law and this laws they will evidently state the penalties about the plagiarism see unfortunately what is happening though most of us know about these statements many people uh, they feel that these are not true and they still use them as excuses to this kind of piracy openly to tell we all just don't like talking something about plagiarism yes because of its negative impacts penalties punishments misconduct everything all negative words only uh, they are around the, this particular term plagiarism so whether in classrooms workplaces anywhere we just don't like speaking about this plagiarism still there are most frequent misconceptions and myths about plagiarism and we all should know that people think that materials present in the public domain are only plagiarized that means things absent in the public purview they cannot be plagiarized is that so no so what will happen individuals they believe that it is acceptable to use other the words of others the ideas of another author without giving proper acknowledgement as long as the work is somewhere in the public domain see 
it does not matter at all if the author of the source he lived thousand years ago or in treta yug he was there any any day if at all there was something written there i should give the credit to the author whether that work is in public domain or not i need to provide credit because somebody else has done that work right okay direct quotes should only be cited is that so if you just put the direct quotes only then are you uh, supposed to give the credit to that author see many people who look down on citing giving citation they are the sufferers believe me because those people they are not understanding the concept at all people they believe that only direct quotes used whatever if i use it directly whatever the author has said so a b c d that thing if i tell only then i have to cite the author no what people will do they'll avoid the direct quotes to avoid that and to provide citation what they'll do they'll rephrase the entire work but see words are just the means of communication you are trying to use them to share your opinions and to share the thoughts of another person and if you quote them if you give proper attributes they are just like your procedures that help another people so that they can find the exact location of your source so even if you paraphrase the work without giving proper attribution to the source again that particular work is plagiarism understand that unintentional plagiarism is fine is it if you accidentally copy something if you accidentally take the idea of somebody else and if you tell it's mine is that right see rewording if you do that also it it is still detected as similarity so please don't put too much of effort in rephrasing something and please do not ignore the original source because it again comes under the act of plagiarism <laughs> so sometimes authors they lose their information sources yes because what we will do uh, uh, with some other work some other responsibilities duties we will just never keep track of them from the beginning of the research i should do that and then what they will do uh, they try to plead not guilty yes it has happened what can i do no that's not a right uh, thing to do so one might have tried to escape plagiarism from these acts saying that it was just unintentional but still you can get punished seriously accidentally or not the paper is plagiarized means plagiarized that's it the information on internet is free and needs no attribution what will happen it is again a myth we all believe that since internet is free it is accessible to everyone because each one of us we have 1.5 to 2 gb free data every day so i'll sit here whatever i want i'll access whatever i want i'll check whatever i want i take down i copy i paste so people think that it is not at all necessary to cite the information uh, that we take from world wide web www see it has a collection of well known information realities but still it is important to cite all the information sources that you take from the internet <laughs> again i already told you about self plagiarism it is not a point of concern no that is not right and it is a myth see many scholars authors or even writers uh, students everybody they have made it a tradition of redrafting their own work and they try to submit it probably i would have done some work in semester 1 i am again submitting the same i'll do uh, here or there i'll do this first batch work i'll do some uh, mixture of words jumbling i'll rephrase it i'll submit it this is also a type of academic plagiarism right see many people say that nothing has been taken from another person's work it after it is my work copying your own work also lands you in big trouble please remember that so most writers they take this advantage and reprocess their work and so what is happening uh, publications granting authorities they should also have some kind of rules to counter these kind of reusing the former works and you are not providing attributions also so there must be some proper uh, guidelines to check all these kinds of activities either in text citation or a bibliography is adequate students they'll think or researchers anybody who will write they think <coughs> that it is all right if they choose to uh, use either 
of the two methods. See, the reality is that a range of papers, they need both. There should be in-text citation and a reference or a bibliography. So, uh, when you speak about this uh, pa uh, parenthetical reference or the in-text citations, it helps you show where you have borrowed the material from, where it starts and where it ends. And it gives a brief reference. Uh, probably it includes the author's last name, a date or page number, anything. And it is uh, somewhere within the body of your SA. Through this, what, what, what is uh, uh, going to happen? It helps to identify an idea's original source from where have I taken this. Then bibliographies, on the other hand, they'll help your audience so that they can locate that source for themselves. They can go, they can again refer the same source. Plagiarism is a concern in non-English speaking nations. Is that if India is a non-speaking, uh, non-English speaking nation, is that okay if we plagiarize here? So the reality is that plagiarism is a global problem. Please understand that. Don't fall under this myth. Okay, uh, that it is only a concern or an issue. It is only a problematic uh, thing in non-English speaking nations. To both English speaking, non-English speaking countries, everywhere it is a global issue. Plagiarism is punishable. It doesn't matter wherever it is committed, right? So it is henceforth, henceforth, it is advisable to get the help of an expert mainly or an instructor so that you can avoid this plagiarism. See, make sure you clearly understand the myths, concept, misconceptions about the plagiarism and also the reprimands according to the copyright law. Now, we understood what are the misconceptions that we have. Probably you would have got a clarity by now. And we also have the most interesting facts about plagiarism. See, uh, uh, when we take up the issues of academic integrity, uh, plagiarism, they are always sensitive issues. It's not only among the scholars, but everywhere. The new fangled plagiarism facts, they're constantly emerging today. Be it the world of social media, the unique blog posts, whatever we see, or the plethora of papers, everything, they are being checked by the trained professors. Yet, unfortunately, it is followed by plagiarism. A study was done, a old study in uh, 1991 by uh, Rutgers University. When the internet and websites have not been in common use, they have reported that approximately 66% of 16,000 learners belonging to the world's topmost universities, they have cheated at least once. Look, look at this report. The trick is that the facts of plagiarism, they were not actually easy to detect those days. 1991, no. Only a skilled professor or an editor, they could spot the similarities in writing styles. But today, we can just feed the paper. We have uh, AI-based detection tools to check anything. Artificial intelligence detection tools we have. <laughs> so, discussing facts about plagiarism, one should, what will happen? We should analyze each case, particular case, differently. Because uh, something you see, when it is an intentional theft, or if it is an accidental mistake, they both are not same, right? We should keep that uh, thing in mind and we should analyze the cases. As we know, plagiarism it is the demon that is haunting every each and every academician. No matter whatever is your discipline, whether say medicine, engineering, uh, uh, literature, management, anything, or whatever is your level of study. But still, plagiarism haunts us. And to avoid any strict disciplinary action, penalty, we should all be aware of the facts or we should know about the details of the acts of plagiarism. So yes, it says text with references without a quotation mark also counts for plagiarism. So we should have a quotation mark to signal that the ideas were borrowed from somewhere. <coughs> the need to avoid plagiarism, it impacts you to present your ideas better right obviously you want to uh, avoid plagiarism so i want to uh, I'll, I'll what i'll do i'll try to present my ideas better common english phrases or whatever idioms we use they are not at all counted as plagiarism yes we use so many wording so many idioms they are not plagiarism okay so you need not have to necessarily come up with novel ideas but 
I should explain the idea in my own words. And also be careful while you are paraphrasing something. See what you will do. You would have changed the text, but the sentence structure, whatever you have, and much of the wordings, they match the source. <laughs> so, uh, this thing, this structure is, is it's more than enough for your professors to call it an act of plagiarism, right? While well, you are paraphrasing. See, if you are paraphrasing, you use your own words and you express something that was written or said by another person. If you are summarizing, it is just a brief overview of an entire discussion or any argument that an author has already made. Okay. Connecting words from different sources, even if in your your idea also, without citing the sources, again considered a plagiarism. So citation is very, very important. Not acknowledging or citing the sources of material is again plagiarism. Uh, it could be a mix of credited. Some authors you have you would have given credit, uh, credit, and for others you would have left uncredited, unaccredited. So these quotations again it leads to plagiarism. So please don't practice that. What are the other facts? Yes, citing common or universal information is not plagiarism. Okay, right. Then using your own work for the second time. I have already told you. Probably this is the third time we are touching on this concept, self-plagiarism, right? Using my own work for the second time. Then citing sources incorrectly, some something, some mistake would have you would have done while citing your sources. Again, it is an act of it is an act of plagiarism. If you are failing to give the credits to the author who has from whom you have borrowed the idea, again it is plagiarism. And information from public domains. And sources without author name that also needs citation. Yes, I have taken it from some source. You need to mention that. Even if it has no author name attached to it, please do not uh, just ignore those sources, right? And borrowed ideas from the work of someone or somewhere, say, it should always receive uh, some kind of attribution, right? Regardless of the author is whether he is unknown or the domain it is publicly used or not, that doesn't matter. You have taken it from somebody, you have borrowed the idea, you have borrowed the work, one paragraph, one line, anything. Please give citation. Please give acknowledgement. Then hyperlinking, we all know about that. Yes, it is not an appropriate form of citation. Please don't use that. See, because if you give a hyperlink, what will happen? It will create problems, say under some circumstances. Where, uh, uh, if at all the hyperlinks, it gets deactivated or it gets erased. What shall, what, what can we do? See, basically, in an academic setting, it is not at all advisable to use a hyperlink as a form of the citation in your writing. And please don't do that. Avoid doing that. And abundance of cited text has to be relevant to your topic. So I have told you that acknowledging is very, very important. Giving citation is very important. What you will do? You will cite all the text. So it, 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 it covers three to four pages of citations itself. But if you are citing, let it be relevant to your topic. Right? I am writing something on HRM and I give all the finance paper citations. What does it mean? No, irrelevant. Right? Yes. Students readily, once they are caught, usually they will admit to plagiarism, it seems. And it is a fact. Then plagiarism, it is ri rising at a frightening rate. Yes, most of the college heads, they say, see, the plagiarism in the students' papers, probably it is increasing over this past decade only when we consider, yes, it has increased at a frightening, shocking rate. And virtual knowledge is also leading to increased plagiarism. Yes, I can sit here, I'll, I can access to each and everything. So what will happen? I do not want to go out, I do not want to go go and work i am not interested in uh, field study field work i'll sit here i'll take 10 papers i'll write my own paper and i say i'll not give proper citation i'll i i am just giving a lead to the increased plagiarism so the rise in the use of computers say internet everything it has a like a, you can call it as grave influence on the rise of plagiarism even the lack of, lack of enthusiasm, it leads to plagiarism. I'm not interested, probably uh, because of my guide's force or somebody else had told me that this is a good topic. I have taken it. But three years or four years, I'm not able to sustain. Now I don't have enthusiasm. Just leave me. 
I have to write these papers. Okay, what can I do? In a year, I have to uh, publish two papers. Now, I'll take somebody else's ideas, somebody else's papers and copy and reproduce. So again, it is an act of plagiarism. <coughs> and students tend to cheat if they do not have the intrinsic motivation. Mm, when we check, so noble uh, initiatives are also being taken to keep uh, plagiarism at minimum. Um, when we see these are like the uh, initiatives from the universities across the world. Even when you are making a video, uh, you are using footage from somebody else's video or when you use the copyrighted music, you play uh, as a uh, soundtrack. At the backside of your presentations or your projects, everything is plagiarism, right? Please be aware of that. After having said so many things about plagiarism, now we shall know what are the types of plagiarism. So this helps us to understand uh, first at the beginning of this presentation, we had seen five slides. Now we can understand. So which act is plagiarism and which is not. Direct plagiarism, yes. The word itself again it says, copying of whole paragraphs or say longer passages from another source and you're not using quotation marks also. No quotation marks. So any plagiarism checking software, it can give you the uh, similarity index, right? You can compare the similarity index. Paraphrase plagiarism. <laughs> the author uh, paraphrases or restates a part of someone else's work and uh, not giving citation to the source. Uh, mosaic plagiarism. We tend to use the phrases from other sources or we are using synonyms to alter some words or parts of a sentence. But what is happening, as I told you, the general general uh, structure, it remains the same. Again, this kind of patchwork, whether it is say, intentional or not, it is a malpractice. Inadequate acknowledgement, already I have explained you, not giving proper acknowledgement to the author. Then, complete plagiarism, taking somebody else's article and you publish under your name. And this is the most wicked form of plagiarism, right? Students, they take assignment from somebody else and they submit it as his or her own. Self plagiarism. You all know about this self plagiarism. Probably third time or the fourth time I have. I'm explaining about this. It needs no separate explanation, I guess. Right. The author using uh, his or her preceding or uh, foregoing works. It could be texts, articles, findings, research results, anything. And I'm not mentioning that I had that this was published earlier. So that is self plagiarism. Unintentional plagiarism. It might be involuntary, but still, we, it has problems like you are neglecting to cite the sources, or you are misquoting the sources, or through ignorance, or carelessly you are using the source by similar words, group of words, or sentence structure, and you are not uh, giving proper attribution. Right. So to check all this, we have regulations on plagiarism, whether it could be fake misconduct piracy, plagiarism, many more similar concerns in scientific publishing, they have been noted by big publishing groups. And to prevent such kind of malpractices, guidelines uh, uh, to govern these kinds of misconduct, if you go to the home pages of all this, COP, EASC, the World Association of Medical Editors, you will get the guidelines, right? So if at all uh, we see the academic misconduct, it has been de uh, detected means, Penalties are to be imposed, whether they are students, researchers who are pursuing masters, doctorate programs, anything. Say in case of thesis and dissertations, they'll consider the severity of plagiarism and the penalties would be like this. If at all, the similar similarities are up to 10%. It is level zero plagiarism. They consider it as minor similarities and no penalties will be put. Level one, similarities about uh, about 10 percent and below 40 percent so such students they need to submit a revised script within a stipulated period and that should that period shall not exceed more than six months level two between 40 to 60 percent plagiarism so students will be debarred from submitting a revised script for one year then something the final level level three similarities above 60 percent so where is your originality in this? You have copied more than 60%. 
so the registration of the students for that program will be uh, cancelled and similar penalties are there uh, for the faculty members and researchers also who indulge them, uh, themselves in the production of such kind of plagiarized research papers and other documents <coughs> okay now how shall we avoid plagiarism in another five ten minutes i'll just wind it up uh, one should write from scratch see it means that your research paper it will be written from beginning to end we are going through the uh, every stage of the writing process as i told you it could be something uh, uniqueness about the conceptualization brainstorming for ideas you are conducting research by yourself no falsification no fabric uh, fabrication nothing is needed you are creating your own framework you are scripting your uh, first draft you are revising it you do proofreading and before you produce the final copy you do all these steps so you are ensuring that you are not taking somebody else's work you are not uh, uh, submitting your work without giving the due due credit wherever it is required and you are not claiming claiming somebody else's work as yours use quotation marks yes till now i have told you <laughs> how we should be using quotation marks right because we will be assimilating information from different sources right irrespective of the information whatever you are using you need to in enclose them in quotation marks All right yes and please avoid paraphrasing the complete passage of an author because see if you uh, restate it too much already i have told you i have warned you that it is a act of plagiarism and again do not please uh, embrace the irrelevant quotes right because this will definitely distract your reader okay so try to include correct in text citation for every quote you try to include paraphrase summarize yes the two terms they are just used often used interchangeably right but uh, it carries some different meaning it conveys some different meaning what is it already i have told you paraphrasing means you are basically uh, restating something in your own words it could be uh, uh, the extensive rewriting but you are trying to retain the meaning see summarizing also restates something in your own words but you are trying to focus on all the significant points of the source if you consider a longer work right and both must be accompanied by citation and do not forget that provide complete citations already i have told you there are say uh, if you have the indexed citations it should have all the corresponding full citations on your reference page uh, various citation styles are used you all must be knowing about the uh, uh, many things mla style the modern language association style we have apa american psychological association we have harvard style many more the chicago manual of style many things so knowing the the basics of these styles how to give the reference it is a vital part of writing a research paper right and keeping your papers content everything documented uh, is the great way uh, uh, how you can avoid the plagiarism and yes no when to cite see while research papers or dissertations almost always include information from many sources and we all know about that and it is very very important that not all information are to be cited right see what will happen if you fill your paper with so many citations again it will be very difficult to read i told you three or four page, pages of references for a small article for a five to six pages article you have four pages of citations what does it mean so how can we know whether which information needs the citation and which does not see we have a rule of thumb commonly known facts they usually do not need citations while if we have some uh, specific information they need sources so you just think is a piece of information generally accepted as true is it known to all the uh, average persons if yes then you do not have to include a source uh, for example uh, say the climate change is a global issue to state this it need not have to be attributed to a source right people all know about this if at all you have some doubt say uh, the average temperature is expected to rise by uh, 4 degrees in the next decade now this requires a source as i told you if in doubt you please cite it then keep tabs on your sources yes it's very very important 
uh, to uh, prevent plagiarizing the work of others. So what will happen when you are deeply involved in the process of writing, uh, you want to uh, insert the citations later. But again, this would be problematical. You will lose the track of the parts. Uh, what is what is that I have written and what parts have come from other sources. So please try, do not forget to attribute the information to different sources. And then know the different types of plagiarism. Already I have explained it to you. So that you are more likely to avoid committing plagiarism. Use a plagiarism checker. Yes. What is happening? Despite uh, warnings, punishments, many students, they still commit plagiarism. It could be deliberate. It could be accidental. And what is happening as a result? Papers, they are to be definitely run through plagiarism checkers. And uh, uh, examples, we have Safe Assign, Turnitin, Arkan, uh, Authenticate. Th these are the most common uh, anti-plagiarism softwares the Indian uh, universities use. We have uh, free or partially free plagiarism detection tools also. Say it could be Dupli Checker, Copy Leaks. We have Viper, Plage Tracker, Plage Scan. So many things. Plagiarism checker. Yes. Okay. And one more thing. Please try to seek advice from your professor because we as professors, what will happen, will recognize that writing part is always difficult, right? And professors or experts, they'll be happy to help their students or their scholars so that you can avoid plagiarism. We will try to give some tips. Though the experts, they'll not be able to cover all the important lessons in writing, but at least if when we give some tips, the students, scholars, they'll learn more how to avoid these kinds of mistakes, right? If at all you have an appointment with a professor, just make sure that you go prepare, right? So you can make most of your time and you can write down the important details. Nowadays, alternatively, what you can do, you can just ask the permission with your professor so that you can record your talk. What will happen? You will not, uh, this will help you avoid forgetting uh, the details, whatever the expert has explained. Conclude, right? So, uh, yes, we all know writing research papers and publishing them, it's no doubt definitely challenging. But still, I say that there is no excuse for submitting plagiarized work, right? So, writing articles, it is not just for uh, gaining knowledge or developing your skills, but it is also, it, it improves the, your uh, critical thinking capacity, your analyzing power your creativity skills, right? We all have writer's block. What will happen? Uh, even amateur writers have, have it, or the literary grades also experience this. So for this re reason, what is, uh, what is important? We all, we should try to fully engage with the writing process we are involved in, rather than we should not resort to plagiarism, right? Because this is like an indicative sign of a diminished creative process and we should not opt to it. And when we speak about the research misconduct, it is a, like a common practice in different countries across the world. We Everywhere we have this research misconduct in different ways and we have already discussed many of things. So and it is always complex as well as costly to detect these forms of research misconduct. So uh, if you practice this kind of things, negative things, what will happen? It comes definitely with heavy penalties. It could be warning, awarding zero credit for the work, whatever you have done, with so much of uh, uh, interest, energy, using the resources you would have done your work. But finally, when you are credited with zero points, what is the use? What will, what will happen to your motivation? There could be, depending on the severity, withdrawal of degree, withdrawal of the honor, or you might lose uh, research funding or your professional stature, any other legal actions could be taken against the individuals. So, uh, uh, to conclude, I'd like to say, learning how to write research articles, papers, theses, without plagiar plagiarizing, it is a critical step towards ensuring the originality. Right, yeah. With this, I'd just like to uh, come to the end of my presentation. And now the floor is open for queries. If you have any doubts, you can just ask me. The session is open for discussion now. You can post your queries in the chat box or you can unmute and interact with the resource person. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you all.
hope you all have Hello, a nice yes good morning good morning uh ma'am i am jyoti from pune i have a question uh, regarding plagiarism uh ma'am i just want to know that how many quotation uh, in review of literature regarding my topic the second uh, chapter is review of literature so how many uh, i mean quotation we have supposed to use there is a kind of a maximum limit or minimum limit uh no nothing like that miss jyoti it all depends on the work for what you are doing whether it is for your masters dissertation you are doing or whether it is for phd uh, just based on the limitation of your uh, phd thesis number of pages and based on your experts uh, guidance you can take that there is no such limitation no maximum or minimum quotations nothing like that miss jyoti okay ma'am the it second thing is relevant you can definitely quote it okay ma'am uh, the second question is ma'am uh, if suppose i use a quotation then i need to uh, paraphrase i mean explain that quotation or uh, we can just put it you know as such original see if you if there is uh, something if you feel that you have to give direct quotation also no problem you can give or if you just want to rephrase and put it in your own words also no problem but both requires citation because see the word the idea whatever you have taken it is definitely not yours you have borrowed it from somewhere from a source so it is very apt to give credit to that source yeah ma'am totally got it thank you there is a question in chat box yes. and i'm seeing ma'am hello uh, for writing a book chapter uh, plagiarism is required yes madam definitely uh, dr vanita madam she has asked this definitely madam because we will be giving the references we will be giving uh, citations everything we will be taking the information definitely from some other source so whatever we are writing any writing part you are trying to publish it somewhere you need to check with plagiarism because it is not i am not saying that you would have copied intentionally something would have happened accidentally unintentionally also some things a few things a few para uh, lines or one paragraph uh, whatever the original author has written the same thing would have come to your paper also or your book chapter also but it to be on safer side that you are not repeating anything the same original idea whatever the other author has quoted so that better to run through a plagiarism checker okay any other doubts Ma'am, any free plagiarism tool, uh, which is uh, most at least efficient. I know many of these are paid ones. Ah, uh, uh, madam, any... just yeah, yeah. Just now I told you, uh, they are like partially free uh, plagiarism checkers are also there. Uh, yeah, ma'am. Copy checker, copy leaks. You you have to just copy your. Uh, no, can uh, we can we rely text? on those uh, results? Um. Uh, ma'am if you <laughs> most of the times just this is again a tricky question yes most of the times we can rely on that okay again what will because, happen now because sometimes submit... when we submit yeah. a paper to a journal or something we do online checking but then uh, we get less number of percentage of plagiarism and then but when you send it they will send us a report which is quite uh, more than what we expected because yeah, they are using a fully free uh, proper version like that and uh, that happens ma'am what will happen with this uh, free plagiarism uh, checking tool sees uh, sometimes it it will not check all the parts sometimes uh, see if you have put it in uh, some a few words in between in caps capital letters again it will not show oh. it like it is plagiarized oh. some things what will happen after a paragraph in between in between people will do that i'm not as i'm not encouraging you to do that they'll put a few alphabets one two numbers something so that what is it you're trying to escape yourself from the uh, play act of plagiarism whatever you have done so what will happen when you put it like that and see almost uh, these three plagiarism checkers completely they'll not check them all the aspects will not they'll not check so it is henceforth it is advisable to go with a, uh, a paid version of the same okay okay ma'am thank you but and being a reviewer uh, as a reviewer how do you think uh, uh, fabrication of data can be identified uh, ma'am uh, the one thing is 
when we just see the uh, connectivity between the paragraphs we will try we will get to uh, we will get an idea so whether this is a cooked up story or to at least one in 70 to 80 percent of the things we can just make out uh, okay. because it is not our part as a reviewer to check the plagiarism i cannot go no, and no, i can no, check no 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 fabrication of data fabrication i understood i understood uh, because when yes. it comes to tables and results uh, mostly they are no very pleasing results uh, yes ma'am usually Many. because the one thing what will happen if at all they are my students or my research scholars i'll know what is their iq and whether they have done this originally <laughs> or not but okay. now what will happen i'll not know who is the author whether he is a grade 1 uh, grade 2 i i just don't know who has submitted he she he is a faculty or he he or she is a student i just don't know anything about them now exactly. what i i'll do i'll just properly check the content whatever is there inside it so uh, most of the times madam only just I, as i told you 70 to 80% only i can check and i can relay because they have already submitted it i cannot go to the source and i cannot check right? because the basic plagiarism we don't have to do because the uh, uh, once they submit itself i think the journal they do all that and then only send it for review no but uh, when it comes to the actual uh, data uh, results and all i think uh, we have to just go ahead very precisely we are not able to distinguish whether it is a actual or fabricated results uh, madam see what will happen if at all the same paper even this person he has written he has plagiarized or you say you want to say it is fabricated data the same table it is already there somewhere if you search in google scholar or somewhere else say if at all there are only just minor changes in box a he has written 17 original it was 16 here he has changed 18 in the box b box c e has changed 1.3 originally it was yeah. 1.5 how can i make out now yeah whatever is there so to support this the previously written tables the previously written graphs also he or she would have changed now yeah. according to that it is proper according to that it is perfect hmm. so what is my work what can i do Uh, if it is everything is correct there is a connectivity there is a proper conclusion their recomm their recommendations are re that comes from they are drawn from their work so yeah. as a reviewer what i'll do i'll say yes, yes. if at all minor revisions are necessary i'll tell yes yeah, you exactly. have to do that or yeah. else uh, some some other things have to be added i'll give the suggestions nothing more than that i can do as a reviewer Yes, the thing is yes as a reviewer one thing what i'll do i say in my first line itself plagiarism no kind of plagiarism is checked by me i tell that ma'am because yes. for 10 plus okay. journals i am a reviewer daily i'll be getting okay. lots of papers in the first sentence yeah. itself i tell that then i put my name <laughs> at the end because so whatever because the reviewing mistakes, itself takes positivities uh, everything i'll highlight yes yes thank you ma'am thank you so to our students our scholars whatever i can do or when i am taking sessions like this i can just tell them these kinds of plagiarisms are there it will have a negative impact and please do not do that i can just request people not to give yes. these kinds of results fraudulent uh, results uh, while they are publishing sure and i can just plead you to uh, give a positive impact towards the academic fraternity yes. and to our next generation that's it oh, is what i can yes. do Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much. Right, ma'am. And I can give you that uh, as you asked me the free uh, tools, the partially paid tools. All this list I can give, and where you can go to the guidelines, where you can check. I have given the those uh, four institutions. Everything major guidelines for research misconduct is is what I can do. Everything I have added in my PPTs for your information sake. Sure, ma'am. Thank you. Is the difference between percentage of plagiarism for journal and book chapter ma'am sorry is the difference between percentage of plagiarism for journal and book chapter uh, yes madam it 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 depends it it uh, there are actually based on the similarity index see it is different for uh, faculty members whatever they do and even the penalties whatever we put for them as i told you in the last slide uh, say uh the same thing it's it's for uh, uh, the similarities for students dissertations and thesis is what i gave and for the uh, research faculties if at all the university or their institution they try to know that there is some kind of plagiarism they'll have different kinds of penalties
and similarity index also what is the percentage 10 to uh, 40 10 to 30 whatever is allowed it definitely depends on the journal and where you are publishing right Any other questions? Uh, so somebody has asked for the a number. Uh, Miss Jayalakshmi Madam will provide you my number. We will be sharing in the group, ma'am. Sure, sure. Number and email address. Everything sure. we will be sharing in the group, ma'am. Thank you. Any other questions, ma'am? If you have any other questions, please post it in the chat box. Yeah, my contact number, mail ID, most of you are asking. Uh, Ms. Jailakshmi, Madam will provide you on the group. The PPT is everything. It's for your reference. Madam will provide you. We will be sharing in the group, ma'am. Sure. Any other queries? Uh, any other questions? I think there are no more queries, ma'am. Shall we find it, ma'am? Sure, ma'am. Okay. So, and we have thank a fire you. Yeah. On behalf of IIT Academy, I thank Dr. Sri Ranjini, ma'am, for the enriching and enlightening session, ma'am. We thank you once again for the amazing presentation. Your tips and plagiarism will be uh, very beneficial and fruitful to the young researchers, ma'am. Thank you so much for your efforts. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you all. Thank I thank all the participants for joining the session today. Thank you all. Thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, thank you for all your active participation. Uh, so thank you. I thank uh, IOT Academy for providing me this opportunity and other organizing uh, team of IOT Academy as well as uh, Ms., especially Ms. Uh, Jailakshmi Rajarajan. Uh, thank you so much. You're welcome, ma'am. Thank you very much, ma'am. Can I leave the meeting, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Sure, ma'am. Thank you all. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for the feedback using the link that has been posted in the chat box. Thank you all. Please submit your feedback using the link that has been posted in the chat box. Thank you all.